you're not dealing with straight East Frisians? No, no, we initially thought we were going to, and we brought um, probably the only East Frisian cross sheep I've seen for sale in Christchurch. They were Paul Dorset East Frisian cross sheep, um, calf for age. So we bought them as our nucleus flock about five years ago, and we did buy an East Frisian ram put over them, but we quickly became aware that the, the pinkness of the East Frisian Pole Dorset was a, a liability in this climate. They got uh, melanomas, skin cancers on the older ewes was becoming apparent, and that spread to udders and eyes and things like that. So we realised we needed to get a darker breed of sheep that wouldn't impact on product, on negatively impact on productivity, but also impact on um, getting a darker skin pigment. So we initially went to an Awasi, we got one from the endangered species farm and um, used him over the flock. He has, as all Awasi, most Awasis do anyway that I'm aware of, has very bad feet. So we got enough genetics out of him to get an infusion through the flock and that did darken them up but the feet issue was an issue. Miles King, who's got a breed in the Warrapa, which has just been registered as a new breed called Dairy Mead, which is basically an East Region based breed, but with an infusion of New Zealand genetics. We went to Miles and got two black rams a few years ago, three years ago now, and so we're now in the process of converting our whole flock to a black flock with an infusion of a Wasi and these black, and black East Region. So, at the moment, I suppose a quarter of the flock may be black, we're moving towards black. Give it five years, I'd say, and the whole flock will be black. We're getting enough ewe lambs now that are black to make all our replacements uh, black. Are they good eating? They are. There's no, no difference between an East Frisian meat and a, and a meat breed, basically. If you were going for, especially when they get more mature, if you're going for a, a good confirmation of an animal, you would say the East Frisian's got deficiencies. It's, it is a leaner, leaner animal, longer leaner animal, but certainly at the prime lamb stage, um, they're nice round plump lambs, they finish early, they grow fast, and they're as tender as any other sheep. Um, but just as they get older, they get that longer, leaner, leaner body, a bit like comparing a, a Frisian cow to, a, to an Angus cow as they get older. But when they're young, they're nice plump and round and and, and we, we've had no negative feedback from selling our coal lambs through the sale yards. We've, we've actually topped the sale yards um, on occasion when, when we've sold them up there so at Colgate. So, yeah, we don't have any problems with them being treated as a meat, a dual, well, a triple purpose animal. Meat, wool and, and milk. Meat, the wool part's a pretty minor part of the whole equation now, but it is probably for most most um, sheep farmers. Now you've dedicated a lot of time and money into it, do you, but do you think there's a future for milking sheep in New Zealand? Oh, I think it is. Um, Keith Nalan, who's the principal of what's now Antari Egg, was um, Blue River. He said he felt New Zealand could support five million dairy sheep. And it was probably a figure he plucked out of the air, but it was, prob but it was based upon what he knew of the market overseas. And it was mainly into Taiwan at that stage, I believe. But um, New Zealand's probably the anomaly in that we don't have a culture of, of using sheep milk as part of our diet. Most other countries embrace sheep dairy products really well. New Zealand's the anomaly, not the other way around. And so being an export country, I think we have a really good um, potential to, to move product offshore. And there's a whole lot of things that are occurring now that um, enhance that just straight economics of sheep farming. Sheep farming needs something else to make it more viable. Lamb, lamb prices are plateauing at where they are now, and it's basically at the vagaries of the dollar, whether they're good or bad. Um, so you've got that making sheep farmers looking for alternatives. You've got all the issues around nitrate leaching, particularly here in, Can in Canterbury in the Selwyn district. Sheep dairy farming has a major issue with nitrate leaching. Our farm environmental plan throughout here is four kilograms of nitrogen per hectare. ECAN want all farmers eventually to be 15 kilograms or lower. Most dairy farms are probably sitting around 35 kilograms, so there's a lot of 
movement to occur within the dairy industry to come down to reduce that nitrate. The sheep dairy industry, depending on what system you adopt, is already right down at the bottom level. So there's a whole lot of environmental issues that, that favour sheep dairy. Economically, it really stacks up. Um, internationally, they seem to be finding really good markets for it. That's all the word we're getting back. The bit we're lacking here in Canterbury is the lack of a, a processor of size that can take the volume to get it offshore because the domestic market can only cope with so much, be it ice cream, yoghurt or cheese. You know, there's a limited outlet there and it would hit that ceiling pretty quickly I think. But once we can get into a decent export regime, I think it will go ahead, strips and bounds.